The third confirmation of ferrocene that we want to investigate is the so-called random confirmation. For all the confirmations that we've drawn so far, we've denoted the top CP ring in black. And this is to represent a ring that is closer to us than the plane on the board. And we've been drawn the second ring in green. to show the ring that is behind the plane of the board. I'm purely well drawn here, but the, uh, the key point is that we're interested in where these vertices are relative to the vertices of the top ring. If the vertex for the green ring is directly behind the vertex for the black ring, that tells us that we have the eclipsed confirmation. If the green vertex is exactly halfway between the vertices of one side of the top ring, that tells us that we have the um, staggered confirmation. If we have any other position for the bottom ring vertices, we have the so-called random confirmation. So this is the confirmation that we're looking at right here. It's called random. And again, we want to look for the high order rotation axes. And recall that we have the iron atoms in the center. And let's imagine a point right at the center of both the iron atom and the molecule. And look for it a rotational axis that goes through this point that is perpendicular to the plane of the board. And we notice that if we try such rotation and we rotate 72 degrees counterclockwise, that all the ring positions will line up for both the top ring in black and the bottom ring in green. So that tells us that we have a C5 rotation. And if we go cl clockwise, 72 degrees, tell us that we have a C5 to the minus one. And those are going to be the only rotations that are coaxial with that because of the fact that five is a prime number. So next thing we want to look for are C2 axes that might be perpendicular to the high order rotation axis. And we can find them in this type of a molecule. And where they're going to be is the trick is Look at the vertex of the black and the vertex of the green and go exactly halfway in between on the opposite sides, kind of like this, and there will be such a C2. The effect of this C2 would be to take this green, which is below the board, flip it over to be above the plane of the board as the black. So the black vertex and the green vertex will be swapped by this C2 operation. The same thing will happen over here on this side. The green and the black will uh, permute under this C2 rotation. So when we're looking for this type of a molecule, when we're looking for the C2, we want to draw it exactly halfway between the top ring and the bottom ring vertex. So we have one of them, and we are guaranteed to have quite a few more. So you know, halfway here, halfway right there. Again, we have another C2 rotational axis. And in fact, we will have five of these. We don't necessarily have to draw all of them, but um, they will be there. And so, so we notice that we have five C2s that are perpendicular to the C5. What does that tell us? Well, it tells us that we have a D5 group. So now the only question is, which D5 group do we have? So to assess that, we need to look for mirrors. You will either have a horizontal mirror, a dihedral mirror, or no mirrors at all. If we had a horizontal mirror, it would be in the plane of the board, kind of filleting our ferrocene molecule there. But we realize that we can't have one, or we don't have one here, because if there were, this point of the green ring here would be reflected into a point above the plane of the board that was also a carbon atom. And there is no such atom. So we see right away that there is no uh, horizontal mirror. Then the next thing to look for is uh, some kind of a vertical dihedral mirror. So we might try something uh, on this point, kind of along the, the C2 axis. But if we were to do that, we notice something when we do the reflection. It, for example, here, we see that we have a potential mirror here. If I look at this particular carbon atom, the mirror would reflect it to another carbon atom that's over here that's also above the plane of the board. That's a key idea. Since there isn't one above the plane of the board, that means that this does not work as a mirror. Similarly, we can 
look for a combination maybe along here and we're looking for something that's going to um, would reflect the green here, would have to reflect to a green that's not only over here, but also behind the plane of the board. It would also also be a green, so to speak, as we've color-coded the levels. And since there isn't one there, it tells us that we also do not have any dihedral mirrors. Since we don't have a horizontal mirror, and we don't have any dihedral mirrors, that means, what do we have? It means we just have this, the group D5. So for the random confirmation, we see that it's the point group D5. For the eclipsed confirmation, to the point, point group D5H, and for the staggered confirmation, it's the point group D5D. And we'll stop here because my cat wants to be fed and she's pushing open the door. Another interesting molecule that falls into an interesting uh, point group family is the following compound. So this chemical has the formula C3H4 and it goes by the name of allene. Allene is interesting because we have these cumulative double bonds with a carbon so we have carbon with double bonds on each side. We have two double bonds in a row, which we're not used to seeing. We're used to seeing double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond, so-called conjugated double bonds. The other thing which is interesting is the layout of the hydrogen atoms in this particular molecule. These two particular hydrogens are in the same plane as the three carbons. So these five atoms to the right are all coplanar. These two hydrogens, on the other hand, one of the hydrogens is sticking out of the board perpendicular to the plane of the board towards us. The other is perpendicular to the plane of the board, but behind. So these two hydrogens are not in the plane of the board. If we were to look at this from behind, kind of down this angle, we would notice, be more careful about it because the, the hydrogens will be closer to us than the carbon, we also want to put the wedge. And then these hydrogens back here are going to be folded back. So, and we're assuming that the carbon we're seeing here is actually this particular carbon. I think of that as the center point uh, in our representation. These two hydrogens are in front of the board. These two hydrogens are behind the board. So we want to figure out what the point group symmetry of this particular molecule is going to be. Now we notice if we look along this particular axis, that's looking straight down this way, we notice that if I rotate by 180 degrees in either direction, that I have a C2. So kind of draw it as a C2 here. So we do have a C2 rotational axis. But you want to see if we have any other things that we have here. <clears throat> well, looking at this particular arrangement, it does suggest that we may have an improper rotation. We've seen a, an arrangement of atoms uh, like this we'll see in the tetrahedral group, for the tetrahedron for molecules such as methane. So you want to demonstrate, for example, that this actually gives us and S4 improper rotation. So let's look at the S4 uh, improper rotation to the left here. So if we start with this setup, we we'll just use this drawing that we already have. Recall that we can think of the improper rotation as a two-step uh, procedure. We don't have to think of it that way. We can think of it as it's, it's one specific symmetry operation. It's just that we can sometimes more easily uh, understand what it's doing by breaking it down into the two steps. So the first step, as we recall, is doing an S, uh, a C4. So we're going to do a C4, which is a rotation by 90 degrees. And if we take this molecule and do that, this hydrogen in front gets rotated to the left. So the one at the north goes to the west. This one here at the south 
gets rotated to the east. And since they were in front, they stay in front. This particular hydrogen to the west gets rotated to the south, and it, since it's behind, it stays behind. So this is the effect of the C4. In fact, we can even number the, the hydrogens to more clearly see what's happened here. So, so we can see the effect of the C4 operation on each of the hydrogens of allene. And we recall that the second step of our S4 operation is a reflection in a plane that's perpendicular to the S4. So that would be a plane that goes through this carbon atom and reflects this part of the molecule into that part and this part into this one. So the effect of this is to keep all of the hydrogens at the same position that they're at now, um, as far as the relative orientation to us, whether they're north, south, east, or west, but will change whether they're in front of the board or behind the board. So the effect here is So now if we take our molecule and do this reflection, our sigma h here, what does it do? Well, the hydrogen in the north position is behind, and the reflection will move it to the front, so we see that there. But this will be numbered hydrogen 4. This hydrogen here in front gets reflected to the back, so that's going to go back. It's going to be hydrogen 1. Hydrogen 2, again, gets reflected. Since it's behind, it gets reflected to the front, becomes H2. And then H3 is in front, so it goes behind. And we see, oh, that's H3. So that being so, we see that the arrangement of the molecule is exactly the same as it started. If we do a C4 and then follow it by an SH, it looks the same as it did before. We change where the hydrogens are, but since each hydrogen is identical, all we've done is renumber it. So that shows us that S4 is also a symmetry operation of this particular molecule. So we have C2 and we have S4. Now the C2 and S4 are coaxial. They're along the same axis. But we want to see now if we have a C2 that is perpendicular to this C2. So we have a C2 here. So that's coextensive with our S4, our high order rotation axis. So now you want to see if we can find any C2s that are perpendicular to that. And they're often difficult to see in this arrangement uh, of drawing the molecule, but it's much easier to see when we use this type of a conformation. So let's show that. The rest of these other things and we'll show where the other C2s of this molecule are going to be. And the C2s run this way. So if you have a C2 that runs this way, it's going the effect of uh, the C2 is to this direction to have a C2. So it takes this hydrogen that's in front and if it rotates, it's going to take that to the back. And the effect of that rotation is to bring this hydrogen to the front. And again, we notice that when we're looking for these somewhat peculiar C2s, that a good spot to look for them is exactly halfway between two atoms. So we sent this C2 will bisect the hydrogen carbon hydrogen angle. So that's typically where we're going to find that sort of thing. So we have one C2 and then we have another C2 that goes this way. And again, it's going to bisect the H4CH3 angle. And we have a C2 that goes like that. So to, to verify that that's since we have two C2s that are perpendicular to the high order rotation axis, that tells us that we have a, a, a D group. So since the high order rotation axis as far as the proper rotation is C2, we have two C2s that are perpendicular to the C2. It tells us that we have a D2. And then we want to look for mirror planes. Well, <clears throat> since our C2 is this way, we have to have a mirror plane here to have the point group uh, D2H, to have a horizontal mirror. 
There is, there is none, because that would reflect hydrogen in front to a hydrogen in back, and that doesn't work. But we do have mirror planes. We have a mirror plane that goes along here. It basically goes north-south, divides the west part of the molecule from the east part of the molecule. And then we have one that goes along the x, z-axis, for example. And this one divides the north half of the molecule in, from the south half. So we have two mirrors. So since we have uh, essentially vertical mirrors, but in this case, when we have the improper rotation, we refer to those mirrors as dihedral mirrors. We don't have vertical mirrors in D groups. So that gives us D to D as our point group symmetry for alene. One thing to emphasize, because the overall high rotation, high order rotation axis for the entire molecule is actually S4, and we know that the n value here is 4, n is 3 or greater, that we will have this phenomenon of degeneracy, which we wouldn't notice, we wouldn't get that, if we only looked at the proper rotation, because the, the highest order proper rotation axis is a C2, and C2 is not sufficient to give us degeneracy. So one last thing we can do here is to look at it from the point of view of a, of a model. So here we have a representation of the hydrogens in... Uh, aline. Let me kind of erase this for a second and kind of show you a sketch of what this is going to look like and then show you what the model gives us. So one way we can represent the molecule is like this. There's like a cross with the sort of an equal sign going horizontally so we can make our representation kind of like this. So we have, this is the back, we see the, the vertical part is in the back and then the horizontal one is in the front. So if we do a C4 on this, the effect is to make the horizontal position in front go vertical. Okay. So what does that look like in the model? Well, the model starts out like this, and then we do a C4, it's going to turn like this. So now it's going to be vertical in front and horizontal in the back. That's what we get. That's the C4 part. But then, to make S4 totally, we need to do a sigma H. So that's a mirror. And then our mirror plane is going to be in the plane of this particular square. We're going to do it this way if we want. So you have to see the square in the center. So if we start off with our molecule like this, that's our alene. We do a C4. It's going to rotate it like so. So now that we have, in front we have horizontal, and then we do a, a mirror plane. So we do a mirror plane, essentially switches the front and the back. So now we have, again, horizontal in the front, which shows us that this S4 actually is a symmetry operation of our group. Operation of our group.